Hello, my lovely viewers, and welcome. I am Kira, a romantic ace, and tonight is the last night of the Royal Romance Book 1, or Book 2, excuse me. If you haven't joined me before, welcome. I drink and I cuss. If you want to play the drinking game along with me, the rules are right here underneath the player over at twitch.tv slash aromanticace for those of you watching the VOD. I myself do have an inebriating beverage of which I'll be partaking as the evening goes on. Um, so chapter 19 here will get progressively more and more interesting. Um, also, if you haven't joined us before, we are playing as Kira, a New York City waitress who was trafficked to the Western European country of Cordonia in Book 1 after she served the informal bachelor party of Crown Prince Shamar, who subsequently had all of a few months to choose not just the person he's going to marry, but who will also be co-regent and have political power when he is king. This seems socially responsible. So we decided, eh, why not? We would throw in our, our hat because, sure, we're qualified to run a country. So we endured the various things one might expect. Masquerade balls, tea parties, croquet, um, ice skating, and oh yeah, sexual assault. And that came back to bite us at the end of book one when someone sold photographs to the press of this man in our room while we were in a state of undress, clearly staring at him and not at all into what he was trying to do. Book two has been, <clears throat> excuse me, book two has been spent clearing our name, therefore, and we ended up finding out this little scheme went all the way to the top. It was the king father, Constantine, who has since stepped down in favor of our Prince Shamar, um, who is now King Shamar. Uh, he, he set all this up because he didn't think that we were worthy. Now, I wonder what might have given him that impression. We're just, you know, a New York City waitress with apparently no education in uh, politics or policy or law or anything that they've told us, which is awesome. So. Our name has since been cleared. The guy who was also implicated in this has come forward, made a formal apology, which was actually quite a good one. Shamar broke off his engagement with our rival Madeline, who was the beneficiary of this whole thing, although it doesn't appear that she arranged it herself. Um, and she has now come back during the homecoming ball. So we are officially announced as Shamar's betrothed. We took our engagement photos last time. Everything's going great until we're at the homecoming ball. And there's Madeline. I'm sure the fact that we released our assaulter's statement during her wedding shower it hasn't left a bad taste in her mouth at all. No, no, why would it? So with that... We will start on chapter 19. Um, so our little stinger says, as the homecoming ball continues, will you secure your happily ever after? Let's find out. So this is chapter 19, Ascension. Well, that's, that's suitably upbeat. It's the middle of the homecoming ball and Madeline has just interrupted you and Maxwell. Well, well, well. I do like, I still like this set, by the way. I'm, I'm enamored of this set, the set design they have here. Very pretty. If it isn't the woman who's ruining Cordonia. Hey, I've only been on the job for like 12 hours, okay? What am I ruining so far? Seriously. <laughs> ruining Cordonia. So we can say, I'm the one who kept you from ruining it. You're just jealous that I'm the powerful one now. Or, I'll concede that you would have made a good queen. <sighs> I don't think we can safely say that Madeline would have ruined Cordonia because she didn't go into the arrangement with malintent that we could tell. Um, I don't know if I'll concede that she would have made a good queen though. So by the way, 
Ru telling her she would ruin it is judgy, so take a drink. Aw, yeah. So, I think I'm going to go with, even though I don't particularly like this answer, uh, you're just jealous that I'm the powerful one now. How else would I be able to single-handedly ruin an entire country? Eh, we've got a point. The sad fact is that you are powerful now that Shamar has elevated you. It saddens me to think of the damage you're capable of causing. Oh, okay, Madeline, sure. You pluck a flute of champagne off of a nearby server's tray and take a sip. Oh, we're not gonna down it like Madeline's mom does? Okay, whatever. You know, Madeline, as much as I truly wish I could stand here and listen to you insult me all day, I have a ball to enjoy. Wow, we are being catty. Okay. All right. Ugh. Because frivolity is all that interests you. Sure, Madeline. Yeah, that's what interests me after I've spent the last, what, probably three, four months trying to clear my name of an, you know, I... I was the one assaulted, and my life is the one that got ruined, and I went and set that right, but you're right. All I care about is frivolity. Shut up. God. Goodbye, Madeline. We can say, you'll always be welcome at my court, or I'll miss you as much as I liked you, which is not at all. Oh, both of these are low-key catty, um, because if we go... You'll always be welcome at my court. It's pretty much what she said to us when she so clearly wasn't okay with us being at her court. Um, I like to think we're all saying this with, the, with those fake smiles, by the way, of like, we're going to smile pleasantly so that people think we're not actually sniping at each other because we are. Um, so I'm going to go with a thing, but if it's overheard, won't sound bad, which is you'll always be welcome at my court. <laughs> Indeed. As a member of the nobility, I'll always be welcome in Shamar's court. Wow. How about you let Shamar decide who's who's welcome in his court here? That's um that's that's some that's some entendre there, kids. But I take the sentiment. It's surprisingly tactful. Huh, screw you too. I'm told I'm full of surprises. Madeline drains her glass and deposits it on a nearby table. Just don't think you can come crawling back to me for help when you realize you're in over your head. When have I ever crawled to you for help, Madeline? If I'm going to crawl anywhere for help, it's going to be Hannah. Maybe. Maybe Olivia, but really only Olivia if I want them insulted to their faces, because we all know that if I want someone dead, that's still Hannah. She sweeps off into the crowd. After a brief scan of the room, you notice Drake sitting at the bar. You walk up to him. Huh, how are you holding up with all this courtly finery? Eh, I've had worse nights. At least no one's asked me to bring them an aperitif. Yeah, well that's probably because you're not wearing your dude ranch outfit tonight. Very nice colors on you, by the way. You look good. I had a feeling I'd find you at the bar. Of course, it's the closest proximity to whiskey. If you're calling me predictable, Roth, I might not order you a drink. I'm the frickin' queen to be. I order my own damn drinks. I, we can say, take it back or sincerely doubt that. Um, no, I sincerely doubt that. <sighs> Fine, you got me, Roth. How can I turn you down? Uh, you can't because you're low-key in love with me. It's fine. It's fine. Asshole. Drake turns to the bartender, just as Penelope and Kiara come strolling up to place an order. I'd like a... 
<clears throat> she wants something pink with an umbrella in it. Drake! Alright, third wheel's being an asshole. Take a drink. I told you, I cuss. Don't you judge Penelope and her poodles and her love of everything femme-coded, okay? Shut up. <gasps> How did you know? It's hard to miss when someone orders one of those travesties. A real drink doesn't need accessories. O okay, I guarantee you, you have ordered something with a maraschino cherry with one of those plastic swords through it in your life, Drake. Stop it. And by a real drink, he means whiskey. I have to agree. I've always been more partial to wine than cocktails. Oh, Kiara, we know what you're doing. You admitted before that you have a crush on Drake. It's fine. Huh, <laughs> look. You can drink all the top shelf Barbaresco you want, but it's still gonna be old grape juice. I can't disagree with him on that. I, I will take a Barbaresco. We. Oui. Yes, this is probably the one thing that Drake actually pays attention to. Tariq pays attention to shoes. Drake pays attention to your drinks. The bartender nods to Drake and gets to work on the drinks he described. Hmm. Wow, Drake. You really know your stuff. Yeah, we knew he did. The bartender soon offers Kiara and Penelope their orders. The two noblewomen exchange a brief, embarrassed look. I, I'm sorry for our behavior at the beer garden last night, Lady Kira. Honestly, I've forgotten if Kiara and Penelope were even in any way inappropriate, so... Oh, apparently they were. When I implied that you'd come to gloat, what I meant was... <laughs> we were drunk. Yeah, Penelope, that goes without saying. <laughs> Penelope? Well, and scared about Madeline leaving, but the more I think about it, I think it's a good thing. <laughs> you deserve to be in Cordonia, Kira. I'm happy you're staying. Oh, Penelope. Well, we can say I'm happy to be staying too, or compliments won't get you back on my good side. Uh, we've pretty well established that we've basically forgiven Penelope, so I'm happy to be staying too. Maybe you can come visit my estate sometime. Are you going back home? Hopefully soon. It's been a long time since I visited my parents. Oh, I'm sure they can't wait to see you. And for what it's worth, Kira, you're always welcome at my family's estate too. They both curtsy and say their goodbyes, carrying their drinks back into the crowd. How about I get you something and then we take a breather? Yeah, <laughs> that sounds nice. I have an idea for where we can go to get some privacy. Oh, oh ho, privacy is it? Oh, okay. Huh. Privacy is a hot commodity around here, and yet we seem to be able to find it so easily. I'd rather spend the whole night alone with you, but I'll take what I can get. Whoa, that was a little forward, Drake. Okay. This is your last chance to spend a romantic moment alone with Drake in this book. All right, remember what this cost for Hannah? It was 30 diamonds. Let's see what they're going to charge us for Drake. Drake is also 30 diamonds. All right, I'm impressed. Okay, all right. So what do we do? Do we sneak out of the homecoming ball with Drake or do we stay at the party? Uh, eh, we'll sneak out with him, I guess. String him along one more time. Yeah, I'd like that. What are you ordering for me? And don't say whiskey. No, no, do say whiskey. Whiskey's okay. Huh. A challenge, huh? I'll take it. 
Drake leans across the counter and whispers something to the bartender. After a few minutes, he passes a glass across the counter. Ah, so he has ordered us a mojito. Interesting. Drake, we can say this is just what I needed, or why a mojito? <laughs> I'm actually curious, why a mojito? It just felt right. Uh, uh, okay. Drinks kind of have their own personalities, like people. A mojito seems like a basic cocktail. People order them like they're nothing, but there's complexity in there. It takes time to muddle the mint just right. Find a balance of sour and sweet. People look at you and see the simple things. You're an American, a duchess. But anyone who's paying attention knows there's a lot more to you than that. So you're saying we can say I've got hidden depths or I'm sweet. Oh, uh, both. Both of these are laced with double meanings, so I'm gonna go with, so you're saying I've got hidden depths? <laughs> Anyone who thinks under otherwise would be underestimating you. Well, that's a damn fact. Why, thank you. So, how did a guy who only drinks water and whiskey become such a cocktail whisperer? You forget that I've watched every person in this room order drinks for years, and not one of them has decent taste. Oh my god, you snob. He orders himself another whiskey and picks up the glass. Drake, how many of those have you had already? Honey, are you, are you trying to get yourself a little drunk? Because we've seen drunk Drake. Um, you're you're kind of sappy. Kind of sappy there when you're drinking. Now, let's get out of here. O okay. You follow Drake away from the ball to a quiet hallway in the palace. He leans against one wall as you both enjoy your drinks, a slight smile on his face. So, you're gonna be a queen soon. <laughs> do I have to start calling you your majesty? Yes, yes you do. Uh, if you call me anything other than Roth, it's gonna feel weird. Everything's gonna feel weird for the rest of your life. <laughs> Alright, I can stick to that. So, is this the part where you make fun of me for becoming a real noble? Drake shakes his head. He lifts his glass to you in a brief toast. Eh, yeah, I know you better than that, Roth. Do you, though? You're you, and there's nothing, not even a title, that can take that away from you. You're using ellipses here. What you're looking for is M dashes. M dashes. That's what you want. <laughs> Thanks, Drake. Although, if you ever start getting too high and mighty, you can count on me to remind you of the good old days. Yeah, I had a feeling you'd say that. You both slowly finish your drinks. Drake sets his glass down on a windowsill, and you catch him looking at you with an expression between hope and longing. Oh, my dude. I'm not even a little bit sorry. I'm sorry for Hannah. I really am. I'm not even a little bit sorry for Drake. Just not even a little. After tonight, we might not get a lot of time to ourselves. Yeah, we'll both have plenty of obligations. Drake nods, though his eyes never leave your face. He studies you as though he's trying to absorb every detail of this moment. How drunk are you again, Drake? Because I think you're probably pretty drunk. I should kiss him or head back to the ballroom. Kissing is an option, so take a drink. All right. 
Do we want to be an absolute asshole to him? No, because being an absolute asshole to him would mean um, betraying our prince, well, king now, our lover, which we don't want to do. So we're going to head back to the ballroom. If we stay out here too much longer, people are going to wonder where we've gone. <clears throat> right, yeah, <clears throat> we should um, <clears throat> get back there. Yeah, yeah, you with the, yeah, okay. So we shared a special drink with Drake at the homecoming ball. Drake takes your empty glasses and follows you back into the bustle of the ball. You return to the party and Bertrand immediately rushes up to you. I'm sorry, Bertrand, why are you still in this country? You need to leave. Kira, I've been looking everywhere for you. That's nice. Please leave the country, Savannah's here. Time to check in with some acquaintances and see how, just how well all your work has paid off. Oh God, no, please leave. So, more mingling? Precisely! Starting with our Italian contact. Oh god, okay, here we go. Buratrand leads you to where the Italian statesman stands, chatting with some nobles. I still don't believe this is a statesman, but whatever. Oh god, can I even try to do an Italian accent tonight? I don't know. Um... The Italian Cup looks like it'll be an actual contest this year. I, I don't know what accent that is, I'm sorry. Buonasera, Francesco. Ah, Duchess Kira, what a delight to see you again. And under such tremendous circumstances. So the Italian statesman approves of our new position in court. Ah, uh, sure. Now that you're among the Cordonian elite, do your old friend a favor and put in a good word for Italy with your King Shamar. Oh, oh okay. It's sure. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Please leave. He offers you a gregarious smile before turning back to his conversation. Most excellent. Uh, oh, please never say that again. Why don't you go visit with Duchess Adelaide next? Oh yeah, okay. This this is this is a 50-50 shot here. Bertrand scans the room, then spots her converting conversing with Justin next to the dance floor. Eh, Adelaide likes gossip. Justin has all the gossip. I hope he's not gossiping about me, but whatever. You approach. A dignified, elegant woman such as yourself should be taking center stage, don't you think? Shut up, Justin. Oh, I like you. I'm sure you do, Adelaide. Cougar. Hey, Justin. Adelaide. What you doing? <laughs> Kira! I was just telling Duchess Adelaide about some of my past clientele. I think we're his only past clientele. Kira's a prime example of my best work. Your only work. And what an example you are, Kira. Congratulations on your big news. I look forward to enjoying many more decadent parties thrown in your honor. As long as we've got good enough champagne, I think Adelaide's good, so yeah. So... Adelaide made her approval of us clear at the homecoming ball. Awesome. I actually care about her opinion. A little bit. Tiny bit. I'll keep the bar well stocked for you. Have fun tonight, Kira. You earned it. Yeah, I damn well did. You did well with the Duchess. Yeah, I'm a Duchess now. Shut up. Shamar approaches you two. <clears throat> Bertrand, I'd like a moment alone with Kira. Oh, oh, alone, is it? Ooh. Certainly. Bertrand bows his head and disappears into the surrounding crowd. Shamar turns to you. <laughs> Enjoying the ball? I 
am, we can say having a great time, are we really hoping you can help liven it up, eh, or enjoying the sight of you in that suit, uh, <laughs> I, I kind of want to go with the third one, even though that's the thirsty answer, just because it's funny, um, although hoping you can help liven it up is also a thirsty answer, so let's just go for the gusto, I am enjoying the sight of you in that suit. Ah, so you like it? It's new. Yeah, did, did the tie come with it? That little gold bow tie there? Yeah? I'd say it suits you. Oh, Kira, go to your room. That was bad. Ah, oh, but it got us a romance point, though. Flattering and funny, eh? Eh, you know, I try. <laughs> I'm a woman of many talents. Oh, he knows. Shamar leans toward you, lowering his voice. I saw you across the room, and it got me thinking, I have a few spare moments before my speech. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh? Yeah, I was thinking of taking a walk through the maze for old time's sake. There's a spot nearby that I would love to show you. A wishing well. He's gonna throw us down it. That's, yeah. He's gonna throw us down the well. <laughs> With all the commotion at the ball, no one would miss us. It's okay. We're only the king and the queen to be. No one will miss us. We'd be utterly alone. Remember how privacy is supposed to be at such a premium? We're just, it's just everywhere. It's everywhere. Oh, you don't say. Yeah. Will you join me? All right, this is your last chance to spend a romantic moment alone with Shamar in this book. Okay. Also 30 diamonds, wow, okay. So what do you do, sneak out of the homecoming ball with Shamar or stay at the ball? Well, it's gonna be our last purchase of the book. So regardless of whether we want it to be or not, sneak out of the homecoming ball with Shamar. All right, lead the way. You and Shamar slip away from the crowd and into the palace's hedge maze. He walks with confidence, clearly following a familiar path through the twists and turns of greenery. Ah, oh, this brings back memories. Yeah. Yeah, I bet it does. Mm-hmm. Good ones, I hope. Well, that depends on how skilled you were, sir. <laughs> eh, for the most part. Oh, oh. The last time we were here, we had no idea what was about to happen that night. Oh, that's a fact. The photos, my father's plot against you. Yeah, that was fun. Wasn't that fun? We'll laugh about that with our kids. I've spent many hours wishing that night had gone differently. Yeah. But tonight, with the love of my life by my side, I want to look forward, not back. All right, cool. Shamar, we can say, I'm so ready to leave the past behind, or the past's not so bad, it brought me to you. Uh, hmm. I feel like if you just keep trying to bury the past, that's never healthy, and it's always going to come up and bite you in the ass at some point. So, I'm going to go with the past's not so bad, it brought me to you. <laughs> Ding, I did a romance point. True, I can't fault history for that. But I hope the place we're going will bring us even more luck in years to come. Shamar leads you deeper into the maze, where the hedges are older and taller than any others you've seen. At last, he turns the corner to a small, secluded clearing. Oh, I wasn't sure if you were joking about the wishing well. Why would he joke about a wishing well? It's one of the oldest structures in the palace, if you believe the stories. 
My mother showed me this place when I was a child. Oh, good, because we haven't brought up the dead mom for about 15 minutes. The tradition says that if you whisper your heart's desire into the well, the fates will make it come true. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And tonight, my love, I thought you might like to make a wish. <laughs> Who am I to turn down a real-life wishing well? You step up to the edge of the well, breathing in the sweet scent of the flowered vines that cover it. The moon's reflection glimmers in the water below. I wish we can say to live happily after ever after, that my friends will always be as happy as they are now, or that I'll be a good queen. Hmm. So this is interesting because we've got three different motivations behind these wishes. The first one is very clearly like self-motivated, which like there's layers to that that I'll come back to in a second. The second one is very friend oriented. Um, and the third is very duty oriented. So the really interesting thing is that if you, you can interpret happily ever after as you would need to have your friends be happy and also be a good queen in order to be happy yourself. I don't think that's what the writers here are going for. So we're between the other two. I like the nobility of I'll be a good queen, but if we're being perfectly honest, Ace is going with that my friends will always be as happy as they are now. You picture each of your friends as you last saw them, except for Drake, who looked kind of put off. Then imagine them one by one a few years down the road, healthy, happy, as inseparable as they are now. And the idea makes us smile. It's so nice. Smiling, you turn to whisper your wish into the well. Now it's my turn. Shamar stands beside the well for a moment with his eyes closed, brow furrowed in thought. Then his expression clears. There is a smile on his face as he murmurs something into the well. Why are we acting like this is a one-time thing? We live on the property with this well. Can't we just go back and keep wishing all the time? Like, really? What did you wish for? Something I certainly hope to find. Hmm. It's a, it's a good answer. Oh, he's going to elaborate. Okay. I wished for the courage to never let my fear dictate my choices the way my father did. Yeah, it's actually, that's pretty good. Shamar, we can say you're already twice the king your father was, or you didn't wish for a throne made out of diamonds. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how much we're playing with that second answer, so we're going to go with you're already twice the king your father was. If you were even half the king Mufasa was. Sorry. Wish or no wish, your people are lucky to have you. I'm ten times the king Mufasa was to have us. Uh, I, don't know. I don't know that we go that far just yet. Yes, but that us includes you. You've already learned from your father's mistakes. No one can be a perfect king, but I know that you'll be a great one. Eh, that's, that's pretty good, actually. I... Thank you. I can't tell you how much your faith means to me. Oh, uh, sure. You can try. Well, you could thank me, we can either say, with a kiss or by helping me get back to the ball. Kissing's an option, so take a drink. And, House Rule says, you know, is kiss the prince. So, well, you could thank me with a kiss. Kira. All right, I'm going to count that as a spoon, so take another drink. I really just want a drink. My stream, my rules. Shamar reaches one hand up to tuck a strand of hair behind your ear. You pull him closer, tilting your head back until his lips meet yours. I, this always sounds so awkward to me, this, like, having to tilt your head back. The few times that I actually have kissed, fortunately... 
All but one person were pretty much my height, so I didn't really have to move much, but even so, you've got this, like, weird posture to your neck when you do it, because, like, you have to kind of tilt your head, and then you've got the, like, push-pull thing of, like, trying to be far enough forward, but not too far back, and it's not comfortable. <laughs> Kissing is not comfortable on the neck, and people with, like, neck pain or, like, you know, vertebral column problems, I can see this being an issue, honestly. <laughs> he slides one arm around your waist, dipping you into a deeper kiss, then pulling you up again as he takes a step back. Woo, did our foot pop? You are always beautiful, Kira, but tonight, in your plain designer dress that you've been wearing for the entire game, Tonight, I simply can't keep my eyes off of you. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Mmm, just your eyes. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheeky. <laughs> well, I didn't say that. Oh, mm-hmm. Oh, oh dear. Shamar presses you back against one of the pillars beside the wishing well. His kisses linger on the curve of your neck as he works his way up to your lips, snaring you in a passionate kiss. You grab the lapels of his jacket and pull him closer. He groans slightly as your body presses against his, one of his hands sliding down to the small of your back. I thought we were pressed against the pillar. Kira. All right, he's, that, that boy's swooning all over the place tonight. Take another drink. Oh, we're not going to swoon back? Okay. His eyes are full of wonder and desire in the moonlight. Wonder and desire. Interesting. Have I ever told you how captivating you are? Mm, I don't know that you've used that word in particular. And just how captivating is that? He lifts one of your hands off of his chest and gently kisses your palm. When he looks up, there is an unspoken question in his eyes. Is it about to be spoken? Be spoke. Sorry. I would do anything you asked of me tonight. Oh, 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 anything. Anything you say. Oh dear. This could get good. Then we can say, keep going or hold me. <laughs> hold me just sounds kind of, kind of almost sad and needy. <laughs> and, and also the thing that I would choose because um, the just game has a thing for the outdoors, doesn't it? Although I haven't given my lovely viewers much of a payoff in this book, have I? Oh... There's no one in the chat, but all right, for you, my lovely yellow viewers, since I have taken the ace route for pretty much this entire book, except for with Hannah, um, <laughs> which we didn't go there anyway, so it doesn't matter. That was, that was just some sensual kissing and some touching. Um, my lovely aloe viewers, this is your payoff, then keep going. I'm going to be very uncomfortable. I hope you appreciate. I was hoping you'd say that. As thrilling as tonight is, the one thing I've wanted more than anything else is you. Ah, oh, then we'd better not waste any time. Mmm, mm-hmm. Somebody's going to notice we're missing. They're all going to guess what's going on. Your wish is my command, my queen. Ooh, ooh, my queen. Ooh, ooh. Smiling, Shamar kisses you again. He shrugs off his blazer while you undo the buttons on his vest and shirt. Oh, hello. Always so considerate. Yeah, boobs, right there. <laughs> Shamar, 
we can say, I should have asked this well, this, or that well to see you like this more often, which that phrasing sounds kind of weird. It's like we're asking the well to see him, but just really odd. Or have I ever told you how handsome you are? Uh, I kind of like the second one. I think it's, I think it's kind of funny. Have I ever told you how handsome you are? Cause I'm sure we have. Oh, you might've mentioned it. But I'm not the remarkable one of the two of us, Kira. I don't know, you've got that nice, like, even skin tone happening. It's, it's nice. Symmetric features. Shamar pulls you into another kiss. He groans softly as you run your hands up his bare chest, then slowly back down toward his belt as he hurries to remove it. Why is he the one getting all naked? It, what is he planning on doing? Yeah, the tuxedo was nice, but I think I like you better like this. Hmm, do we now? It's cold out here. I'll take that as a compliment. I think you should. <laughs> you turn around so Shamar can reach the fastening of your clothes. As he undoes them, he kisses each inch of newly bared skin. See, now I wish I'd have worn, like the waitress outfit or something so that when he goes, you know, to the back to reach the fastening of the clothes, did it just make absolutely no sense, but it wouldn't let me change. So, I'm annoyed. Mmm, enjoying yourself? Hmm, <laughs> it would be a crime not to admire what I see. Hey, look at the artwork all you want. You don't have to take it home. Except you do, because apparently we're getting married. You step out of the last of your clothes and instantly shiver in the evening air. Yeah, everything is, like, contracting in the cold, y'all. Then Shamar gently lowers you both onto the lawn, which is colder because that's how fresh grass works, warming you both with the touch of his skin. All right, be okay then. Kira. That boy, that boy will not stop swooning. Okay, I know the rule is technically PC swoons, but I really want to drink. He reaches one hand up to touch your cheek. You are the most beautiful sight I've ever seen. Mmm, are we now? Flatterer. He slowly kisses down your chest, across your stomach. Lower and lower. Oh, was this boy serious? <laughs> he was? Holy crap. Okay, T for teen, y'all. Just want to remind you. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to try to make an actual noise there. <laughs> Shamar, that's... Is he doing the alphabet thing? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're incredible. But I could use more heat. Yeah, because when the skin gets all, like, flushed, you lose body heat a lot faster, my dude. This is counterproductive. <laughs> oh. I like to, like, before he moves on, I like to think, like, his answer to this is just to, like, slap his arms across our body and be like, there, you're warm now. And just, like, continue. I figured this was the answer, but it's fine. He slides back up slowly to kiss the curve of your neck. As you revel in the warmth of him, he begins lowering himself onto you. Raking your nails down his back, you draw a groan from Shamar as you begin to move as one. Oh, oh, oh dear. <laughs> you, you guys didn't see it, but it did its little word wiggle thing there on, on his name. Yes. Shamar. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you and Shamar made love at the palace's wishing well. Please don't call it made love. I, mm. Later, <laughs> how much later is indeterminate. You both rest against the side of the wishing well. Has anyone got a cigarette? Don't smoke, kids. Do not smoke. Shamar plucks a flower from one of the vines and holds it out to you. 
You inhale its sweet scent before letting it drift away on the wind. How strong is this wind? Kira, that was unforgettable. That was something, yeah. Hmm, you're not half bad yourself. Yeah. When he laughs, he looks at you with such pure bliss that you can't help kissing him. He kisses you soundly back. Do you think anyone's missed us yet? Are you kidding? You guys are probably all over Twitter by now. Oh, perhaps. But it was a risk worth taking. Mmm, I bet you think so. Hope somebody had a condom. You both collect your scattered clothes from around the well and help each other to dress. All buttoned up all nice and neat again. I suppose we should go rejoin the ball. Oh, if we have to. Though I think I preferred this detour to the party. Well, um, a lot of people would. You and Shamar stroll through the hedge maze hand in hand until you finally reach its exit. In and around the palace, the homecoming ball continues. When you arrive back at the ball, Hannah and Maxwell find you and Shamar. <gasps> Kira, the fireworks are about to start. Where have you been? Ah, uh, do I have to answer? Uh, waiting for you to find me, of course. Ooh, slick, I like it. Consider yourself found. We have to go. Okay. The best view is on the lawn outside. Drake's holding a spot for us. I'm the queen to be. Am I not standing with the king in the prime viewing spot? Ah, putting his usual standing around at parties bit to good use. Yeah, he's probably like taking up an entire piece of lawn just by pacing around on it. Well, what are we waiting for? Uh, all of you. Maxwell takes your arm and leads you out onto the front lawn of the palace. Shamar and Hannah follow behind, laughing. You arrive outside and find Drake, along with Bertrand, Savannah, and Barty. No, Bertrand needs to get the hell away from Savannah. Go, you shoot, you shoot, shoot. I held our spot with a few additions. Barty makes a happy baby noise. I can't do it. I don't know babies. I hope you don't mind us joining. <laughs> Not at all. Everyone should be here. It's the end of the book. The whole family, uncles included. Yeah, the dad can fuck off. I'm sorry. I don't like him. Yeah, yeah, touching family things. Let's not make a big deal out of it. Lady Kira, if I may have a moment of your time. A, that's Duchess Kira to you. B, no, you can get out of my country. Bertrand leads you and Maxwell to the fountain. Hey, why is Maxwell coming? Kira, there's something I want to say to you. Oh dear. By now you well know that, that I didn't always believe in you, in your ability to represent House Beaumont in our time of need. But you have proven me wrong time and again, and well, <laughs> I'm proud of you. Oh, God, you're the last person I want proud of me. I would rather have Olivia proud of me than you. You have earned my utmost esteem, and I would venture to say that you are far more than an honorary Beaumont. Yeah, I am now that I'm a duchess, huh? Shut up! I'm still a Beaumont, even though I have my own duchy? Hey, you'll always be a Beaumont to us. Oh, okay. Unquestionably. Yeah, shut up. This calls for, we can say, a group hug or a family party. I don't want to hug Bertrand, so this calls for a family party. 
It'll be the first Beaumont Roth bash. Uh, sure. Woo party! Hmm, perhaps a celebration is in order in the future. Well, yeah, because tonight there already is one. For now, you would both do well to focus on tonight's party. You're the one who dragged us out of the party, Bertrand. I don't want to hear none from you. Now, I'm going to go find somewhere to sit. His gaze drifts toward where Savannah rests on the grass, Barty in her lap. You're not sitting with them, Bertrand. Get out. Get out. No, Maxwell! Go on, Bertrand! Sit with them! No, Maxwell! No! I'll find my own place. Best not to push things too quickly. Yeah, I'm gonna push you right out of the country. <laughs> he eyes both of you sternly. Why is Bertrand being the only voice of reason in this situation? Oh my god. Don't be late for Shamar's speech after the show. Uh, okay. You and Maxwell share a look as Bertrand strides off. So, this whole Bertrand Savannah thing. Yeah, we've got to fix that. He needs so much help. No, we don't have to fix anything. I don't want to fix anything. I am perfectly fine with Bertrand not being with Savannah. Oh my god. No. A herald steps out of the palace and announces a countdown. <gasps> T-minus 60 seconds until the show. Let's get back to the others. This is going to be great. Oh, why do I have the feeling everything's about to go terribly wrong? You and Maxwell hurry over to your friends, who have taken their seats on the grass. You sit next to Shamar, who I still don't understand why he isn't in his own spot. Lady Kira, I see you're accompanying me for tonight's show. That's Duchess Kira. Is this not finalized yet? Is that why this is happening? It must not be finalized yet. You know we can say His Majesty should require a royal escort at all times, or I wouldn't pick anyone but you. Eh, you know I wouldn't pick anyone but you. Even though I have a couple times. I'm glad. It feels so good to finally be with you out in the open. I want to relish these moments. Yeah, it is pretty nice to be with you, surrounded by our friends, with nothing in our way. Shamar sighs. I can't help thinking of tonight as the calm before the storm. Fireworks and a homecoming ball are calm? Eh, could be worse. Relatively speaking. After tonight, we'll both have a lot to prepare for. Do we have to do another engagement tour? Because y'all. Our wedding, your coronation, solving the problems of an entire kingdom. Eh, you know, Tuesday stuff. <laughs> Is it selfish if I want to focus on that per first part for a while? Uh, the wedding is gonna be s extremely stressful, so yeah. I hope not, because I was just thinking the same thing. So much of our future is going to be in the public light, but when I look forward to that day, I just think about us, about you. I wish we could skip ahead to, we can say, our wedding day, our honeymoon, or our wedding night. <sighs> No, skip ahead to the honeymoon, because that means all the party and every- that's all over and done with, and it's all behind you. I wish we could skip ahead to our honeymoon. I think we both deserve a vacation. I'd like nothing more than some time alone on a beach with you. Huh, <laughs> anywhere with you, really. Yeah, you just had all kinds of time over at the wishing well. Don't get greedy. 
Shamar gently takes your hand. Whatever the future brings us, Kira, I'm just happy I get to spend it with you. <laughs> so am I. The Herald reaches ten. People from the crowd join in the countdown. This Herald's been counting down from sixty? Poor guy. Ten! Nine! Eight! Seven! Six! Five! Four! Three! Two! Baby makes a happy noise that I guess is supposed to be one. Where is Oliver, by the way? Where's my dog? Please, somebody have the dog in a room where he's safe because puppers don't usually like fireworks. I should lean against Shamar or kiss Shamar. Kissing's an option. Take a drink. Doing lots of drinking tonight. And house rule says you kiss the prince, so I should kiss Shamar. Even though this means missing the fireworks. You wrap your arms around Shamar, leaning into him for a kiss. Smooch. And there's the fireworks. Ain't they so pretty? Let's see where the loop is. It's actually a pretty long loop. Of Whoa, that was a little too close to the palace. Romance point, you know you're missing the show. I can see over the top of your head, it's fine. I prefer the current view. Shamar smiles. I used to worry that you'd regret coming here. Now I can't imagine you being anywhere else. That's convenient because neither can I because apparently I had no life back in New York. This is my home now. Sure it is. Our home. Aww, it's so sweet. Placing an arm around each other, you both look up at the fireworks. A cacophony of fireworks light up the night sky in a kaleidoscope of colorful patterns. Burst after burst explodes overhead until it all falls silent, leaving a nebula of smoke in the air. With the finale over, all your friends reunite. That was everything I hoped for. We should do this every night. That would be a fire hazard, Maxwell. Oh, I don't think I can handle every night. Yeah, poor Hannah, let her relax. Yeah, Barty could barely handle tonight. Barty makes a neutral baby noise. Sure. He looks fine. He has that old Beaumont endurance in him. Oh, God, no. We should prepare for the final speech to honor Kira tonight. Uh, what? What? What now? Ugh, I almost forgot how this ball goes on forever. Shut up, Drake. <laughs> yeah, same old Drake. Come on, let's find some fancy food to disparage. And probably put poor Barty to bed. What time is it? Baby needs a sleep. The group heads back inside. In the ballroom, Shamar splits off to prepare for the toast as you, Drake, Hannah, and Maxwell join the gathering crowd. <laughs> Looks like we arrived just in time. Hmm. Worried they'd start without you? We could never start without the Lady of the Hour. Yeah, Shamar will signal you to come up when it's time. Heh. <laughs> Easy. Mmm. Is it, though? 
Is it? I'd say make us proud, but we couldn't be more proud of you. Uh... <laughs> okay. Thanks. I can't believe I've gone from being a waitress to a queen. Well, a soon-to-be queen, anyway. I couldn't think of a better waitress for it to happen to. Okay, sure. Forgetting something, Roth? You can't toast without a drink. Are you trying to get me drunk, sir? Oh, right. Oh, shit. Are we wearing our special color-changing nail polish? Drake takes a flute of champagne off of a passing waiter's tray and steps next to you. Here. The chime of silver on glass draws your attention to a stage on the far side of the dance floor. Shamar stands out on the stage, smiling out at the crowd. Before the evening draws to a close, I want to thank the take the opportunity to thank you all for coming together to celebrate our return. And to celebrate our new Duchess Kira of House Roth. Sure. She has shown true strength in the face of adversity, a trait, with a trait which we born Cordonians know well. Revitalizing the old houses of Cordonia is just one of the ways in which I plan to reinvest in our beautiful country. Please join me in raising a glass once more to her. To Duchess Kira, the future queen of Cordonia. Hmm, okay. The crowd applauds because they can't do it otherwise. King Shamar's eyes find you in the crowd and his smile brightens. He extends a hand toward you and you begin to step forward. <gasps> Suddenly, the lights go out. Oh dear. Oh, oh dear. An explosive popping sound tears through the air, then another. Wow, our security sucks, y'all. <gasps> what was that? More fireworks? No, Penelope, it was not more fireworks. And also, if this is what I think it is, you would see the flash, or it would just sound like clapping. Like, la kind of loud clapping, because um, they, they do make things that are made to uh, muffle the, or um, hide the flash as well as the sound. <gasps> not fireworks, gunshots! Run! Run where? <gasps> Adelaide screams. Terrified guests scream and try to flee, and the crowd surges around you. Oh, holy shit, he's still alive. All right. Kira, where is Kira? Guards, protect her! In this pitch dark room, where no one can see anything, find Kira! Sure. Yo, oh, Jesus, okay. There's, a, there's an assassin in full-on, like, G.I. Joe garb going on here. Now! Take them out! D no! Do not! The lights flicker back on, and all around you is chaos. Drake is still next to you, but in the panic and frenzy, you've lost Hannah and Maxwell. Oh no! Oh no! We are in shock! They have not just kidnapped our friends! King Shamar, get down! Uh, what? At the front of the room, you see Shamar and his security team fighting off a dozen assassins. As you watch, Shamar ducks under a knife and throws an assassin over his shoulder. Wow, we just jumped genres like hardcore, y'all. Wow. Okay. He's <laughs> very determined and manly, I guess. I don't know. And then you turn to see one of them aiming a gun right at you! Uh, there is no good way out of this because you, you are a fish in a barrel, my dear. With the look of the scowl of determination, I guess. Oh no, do not do the thing that I think you're going to do. Kira! No, don't, don't you do it! And the assassin pulls the trigger. No! Oh 
Oh my god! <sighs> Drake jumps in front of you, putting his body between you and the bullet. Fucking idiot. The two of you collide as the shots hit him. <sighs> Only saving grace here is that a 9mm round doesn't go through all that easily. Otherwise, this would all be for naught. <laughs> um, yeah. Drake! Drake! Is this where they're gonna leave us? Oh my god, it is! Okay. There has been an assassination attempt at the royal palace. All right. Are your friends okay? Who are Cordonia's enemies? Find out in the royal romance, book three. Okay. Wow, that was needlessly dramatic. Okay, that will merit a trigger warning on this on this video. Um. So yeah. Uh. This is, this is now at an impasse because we have certainly reached the limit of what my bandwidth can handle um, for live stream. I, I am not certain at this point that I actually want to continue live streaming because of this. Um, if, if it's going to be this slow as far as like any interactions with chat, or anything like that. It's basically the same as if I put it on YouTube and people just commented. So um, I will I will take that under consideration before we start book three. There's also another just short, cute little dating sim that is um, that is uh, asexual lesbian setup, which we'll probably just go straight to YouTube, because I can't imagine it's very long. I haven't played it, um, but I can't imagine it's very long. So, um, I, I suppose I could look up what the playtime is on it and just decide then. But I will keep you posted on my Twitter, at Kira S. Roth, so check there. Um, but uh, until, until I see my lovely viewers again, Catch you later.